welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at a Linux distro called Commodore OS 3.0. This is a retro-futuristic vision of what Commodore might have produced in an alternative timeline and comes with over 200 games. The distro can be installed on any standard PC with a 64-bit processor and this includes Commodore 64X and My64 hardware with a mini ITX motherboard in a retro case. And I constructed a system like this on the channel back in 2020. But it's important to stress you don't need special hardware. You can install Commodore OS 3.0 on any standard PC or use it in a virtual machine. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we are on the Commodore OS website. A great deal has been happening in the world of Commodore recently, with YouTuber Perifractic and others having just bought Commodore and all of its trademarks. We can learn more over on Commodore.net, where they're now selling a recreation of the Commodore 64 called the Commodore 64 Ultimate, available in three different versions, as we can see although they also still list on this website the Commodore 64X, the custom case with a Mini-ITX motherboard inside it, and which is still available via miniitx.com. There it is, spinning around on the screen. But back with Commodore OS, we've got on this website an embedded video all about the Commodore 64 Ultimate, although it actually runs C64 OS, not Commodore OS. And so let's click here to enter the site like that, and we'll scroll down past the news all about the C64 Ultimate and the purchase of Commodore, which is very exciting, but not the subject of this particular video, because what I want to focus on here is Commodore OS 3.0, released as we can see on April the 22nd, 2025. And if we scroll down just a little bit more, we can see there are download links. We can download either directly or via torrent, and it's worth pointing out that the download file here is 36 gigabytes in size. And to save time, I've already done the download, got it in this folder over here, there it is, where we can see that the zip file extracts to an ISO, which is 37.8 gigabytes in size. This can now be installed either on real hardware or in a virtual machine. And do note that the installation partition needs to be at least 90 gigabytes in size. Back on the download page, we can see there's a link for installation instructions from distro creator Leo Nigro. And what we have here covers setting things up either in a virtual machine or on real hardware. And there's a lot of detail here, and I'd strongly recommend reading this post very carefully. Anyway, in this video, I thought we'd try Commodore OS 3.0 on my long-suffering Odyssey X86 J4105 mini PC test system. And if you're wondering why I'm not using the Commodore 64X system I once built, it's because I had the retro case on loan and returned it after making my review video. So we now need to write our ISO file here to a USB drive, and I've got everything all set up in Belena Etcher, although you could also use Rufus. As you might have noticed, here I'm running Linux Mint, although you could do everything just as easily in Windows. As an aside, note that the USB drive we're writing the ISO to is actually a 64 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro micro SD card fitted in a SanDisk QuickFlow reader. I now often use these when flashing live operating system media as it creates a USB drive that's A2 rated for running applications and with a read speed of up to 200 megabytes a second. And so performance is better than most USB drives. So let's click to start the flashing process. There we go. And then just put in my password to keep Linux happy. And we'll now use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through as our Commodore OS installation media is created. Greetings. I've now put our drive into the Odyssey, so let's turn on the power. There we go. 
the PC is all set up in its BIOS to boot first from USB. So if we just wait a little bit of time, here we are being welcomed. And I'm first going to change my language and keyboard layout to my region, just to save me having to do it later. Won't take a second, like that, and like that. There we are, back to the main menu. And we can now launch into Commodore OS, also known as Commodore OS Vision. And we will now speed on through until things get exciting. And oh look, they're getting exciting. Commodore OS Vision looks very exciting indeed. And it's going to play us a bit of music and even speak to us in a second, so I'll be quiet to allow that to happen. Welcome to Commodore OS Vision. And there we are, the computer has spoken, so I'll click on OK. To continue to use Commodore OS Vision, you agree to the following terms. I will agree to the following terms. It's nice to have a computer talking to you, isn't it? Very friendly. So uh, let's again continue. Turning on the Commodore OS animated wallpaper. And as we just heard and can indeed see, we now have an animated desktop wallpaper. Very exciting. So let's speed through the installation media check. And as we do so, I have turned down the system sound because I'm not absolutely certain about the copyright status on the music included with this operating system. And so whilst there's loads of retro music included, it does sound really nostalgic. I'm not going to include it because I don't want to run the risk of a copyright strike. Anyway, our media check has completed. So we'll now just uh, continue by clicking on next like that. We will do a regular install using the SSD that is included in this computer. I've just got one NVMe drive on this system, so we'll install onto that. And we'll do that, we'll just click on Next. And then I just need to click on Start. We will, of course, now speed on through as the installation occurs. And whilst it's going on, it's worth noting that Commodore OS 3.0 is Debian-based, and specifically, it's an unofficial spin of MX Linux with a Mate desktop. Anyway, let's now let the installation complete. And for some reason, things seem to have paused. Not quite sure why. It says requires operator input. I'm going to leave the computer name at Commodore. Domain name can might as well stay at that. I'll leave workgroup as workgroup. Can I click on next? I can. We can change the locale. I thought I'd done this earlier, but I'll do it again like that. And uh, that's OK. And then next again. And there we are, it's finished. So we can just click on finish. Whoa, that's exciting, isn't it? The system's now going to reboot. And oh look, we can select Commodore OS Vision 3.0. We didn't select it, it got there before us. It's very retro looking, isn't it? I do like the feel of this operating system. Here we are back with that really cool logo. And once again, we're back with a spinning mouse pointer on the desktop. And so what I'm not going to do is to take a look around. Consider changing your password. And it seems I'm going to be changing the password. So I'll get on with that and also making a few scaling changes. And I'll come back to you after that. Greetings. Here I am back again, and I've made a few modest scaling changes so we can see things more easily on video. And what we have on this beautifully customized Mate desktop is a top panel with all the usual things over on the right. And on the left, we've got system menu, a places menu, and an applications menu. And I love the retro font. It's absolutely beautiful, really, really clear. A lot of modern distros could learn a great deal about accessibility from the choice of font we have in this system. And then we also have a dock down at the bottom, again, beautifully implemented. And uh, I love the way when we click on an application, for example, Firefox, like that, it goes up in flames and then comes up. And again, look at the, the clarity of the font in the address bar here. And Windows here have got the wibbly wobbly thing turned on by default. And then when we shut them down, they do that in 3D. It's all really beautiful. 
As you probably noticed, we have a 2D desktop wallpaper here. That wouldn't be unusual on most systems, but here we can have the animated one if we wish. We can go to System and Commodore OS and toggle Animated Wallpaper. Turning on the Commodore OS Animated Wallpaper. And there it is. We can work with that if we wish, or we can turn it off again, as you will probably guess as well, the same thing in reverse. And uh, now turning the animated wallpaper off. Thank you, computer. It's turned it off for us. In terms of other things we have in the system menu, it's worth noting we have under preferences here and look and feel and under visual effects manager. There it is. We have got the ability to change all these different effects which are applied. All here we can see, for example, the wobbly windows is turned on, but we've got masses of things we can control. So if you don't like some of these effects, you can always turn them off. Oh, and something else I've got to show you here in the system, just because it's cool, is if we go to Commodore OS and we go to settings, we get this. Commodore OS settings manager. Isn't that lovely? I love the way they've emulated the CRT screen. So for example, we could, uh, Edit our general settings with a three. Commodore OS general settings. There we are. Or we'll go back to the previous level. Commodore OS settings manager. Or we could uh, exit by pressing return. I just love the way everything is done in this. It's really, the attention to detail is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, you're probably wondering about all the included software. And it basically falls into four categories. And so we go to the Applications menu up here. The first thing we find is things like Accessories, of course, and we've got stuff under System Tools, as you would in, in any distro. But we've also got lots of what we could call here standard software. We have got LibreOffice. We've got under Graphics. We've got uh, GIMP is pre-installed. Blender is pre-installed. We have got uh, Inkscape pre-installed. We've got Critter pre-installed. So if you want to do graphical stuff, you've got all your software, well, pre-installed. And there's also a Deluxe Paint clone, which I find absolutely fascinating. Let's roll this up. Takes me back to my Amiga days, and uh, there we are. And if we just pick up, for example, that little brush there. Oh, this takes you back. It's marvellous to see that, isn't it, running on this system. Do we want to quit? Yes, I think we will discard. We've also, back in Applications, got lots of stuff here under Video. If we go into Video here, we have got, as you can see, Kodi, OBS Studio, OpenShots pre-installed, VLC Media Player. So again, lots of stuff to use. Handbrake for video conversion. So don't think that Commodore S is just about playing games. You could use this as just a general distro with lots of software pre-installed. Second thing we've got here is software to do with programming. You probably noticed the programming menu. And here we've got all sorts of things, Visual Studio Code, Scratches here, but particularly lots of versions of BASIC. If we look to a Commodore OS BASIC Studio, let's bring in a very simple project and also make the font a bit bigger. There we are, you can see my amazing program. And if we run the program, comes up in a window down here, Stanley Rolls OK has been printed 10 times. So if you want to do some BASIC programming, you can do it on this system with all the included tools. And again, to show you just because it's cool, let's go back to programming and to uh, Commodore Basic, but this time pick up Commodore OS Basic with a, again. This interface is currently experimental. Check back after updates for progress. A beautiful implementation of what things look like on an old CRT display. And unfortunately right now this doesn't work. If I do a print and hello, it doesn't work, but uh, never mind, it does say it's experimental. We will quit for now. Third thing we have here, after what we might call normal software and programming related stuff, is lots and lots of Linux games. And I mean lots and lots and lots of Linux games. Here's lots of uh, action games down there, adventure games, beat em up games, board games, desktop games. We have got Solitaire. I'm having therapy though, so I've actually got the ability to resist playing that right now, which is good, isn't it? I've got a fantasy role playing, first person shooter, platform games, uh, puzzle games, racing games, shoot 'em up games. As you can see, masses of masses of Linux games are included. And I think we should play one game, so we'll go to action and play maybe uh, Breakout HD. Here we are, we'll do a new game and uh, 
start original level. Here we are. Oh, I could spend hours doing this, but uh, don't worry, I won't spend hours, because if I did hours and hours, we'd be here forever. Look, I got it at the top, so it's going to stay up there forever. I haven't got to hit it yet. There we are, we hit it and bang, 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 and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, I must stop playing this or we'll be here forever, so I'll press escape. Do I want to quit? Yes, I do. And we will uh, come out of this and uh, quit. And then finally, after all the different games and the normal applications and the programming stuff, we have stuff related to playing games. And specifically, this means we've got various game services and tools. We've got Wine pre-installed, Lutris, uh, Play on Linux, Wine Tricks, uh, etc. This system is very much set up for Windows-based emulation. And we've also got lots of Commodore emulators. So you can see loads and loads of Commodore emulators. Although if we run one of these up, for example, the Commodore Amiga one down there, that's one of my I first went to. As you can see, we can't use it because a ROM is required, which is going to be the case for lots of these emulators. So they are there, but you'd have to have the ROMs to actually use them. Anyway, we've also got here just to show you emulators that aren't for Commodore hardware. We've got all of these. Lots and lots of classic systems here. Again, some will require ROMs to actually make them work, but it's great to see that they are here. Anyway, I hope that's given you a bit of an idea what is included. I'm now going to go back to the games menu. This is the heart of the system, because I'm going to play another very, very exciting game, which is Catman. Here it is. This is a Pac-Man sort of clone. So I'm going to get on with playing this, and I'll come back to you after that. Right, before we close, I wanted to show you that Commodore OS runs fine in a virtual machine. Specifically here in Linux Mint, I've got it installed in VirtualBox. Here it is. And if you want to set up VirtualBox virtual machines like this in either Linux or Windows, there are recent Explaining Computers videos on this very subject. As these are general guides, it's worth noting that because Commodore OS is such a large install, you must create a virtual drive at least 90 gigabytes in size. And personally, I selected 100. Also, before booting the machine up, go into its settings and then display and make sure that the graphics controller is set to VM SVGA and that 3D acceleration is enabled. Oh, and also set the video memory to the highest possible value. Back here in our virtual machine, something I forgot to show you in the last part of the video was the terminal. So let's launch it here. There we go. And I think this is really lovely. It's really Commodoreified, as you can see. It works, of course, just like a normal terminal. We could do a LSBLK, something like that, and it would work. But I do love all the little touches like this that make it feel like you're really running a Commodore microcomputer. Commodore OS 3.0 or Commodore OS Vision 3.0, I still haven't figured out the official name, but whichever it is, it is an incredibly fun distro that, in my view, merits a mark of 11 on the excitement scale. But what do you think of this retro futuristic distro with all these games included? Are you going to give it a try? Is it something that excites you? Please let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.